Hello, people of Truro. Hi, everyone. Sam and Michelle here for, I, I've lost track, so I'm going to stop saying what eight. number it is. I want to say we're at eight. Eight. Oh, yeah. yeah. Our eighth Truro Famous Live. Roxy has just woken up. I can oh, yep. hear parking. She's celebrating. You guys have done eight. Hooray. She's a very supportive dog. So yeah. we're super excited today. We're all, I say that every week, but I am especially excited because I love this gal so much. Um, we have Carly Burgess here, and I, I actually have notes because I, I would forget the most important things about Carly from her accomplishments in curling, so I just didn't want to miss anything. Three Canadian championships, three world championships, gold medal at the Youth Olympics, and fifth player at two other world championships where they got silver and bronze. That oh is God. amazing. You would it think really she's like 47 years old, but she is not. <laughs> so without further ado, let's bring on Carly Burgess. Hey, hey guys. Carly. <laughs> How's that for an intro? That was pretty good. Thanks. <laughs> That's why I messaged you because the last time we chatted, like you were a couple of medals short of that. So I was like, well, I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. 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 Well, I do have to say Carly's on her lunch break right now because you have the job that I dreamed about when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good job right now. Being the, being the summer cruiser person for the radio station sounds like a great way to spend your summer. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. This summer does look a little bit different, but I'm enjoying okay. it, so. Good, yeah, there's not as many events to go to, I suppose, and that sort of thing, but. And you're one of those people, Carly, I mean, you're super young, I'm certainly not gonna ask your age, um, mm -hmm. you can tell us if you want, but where you kind of know a lot of people in town anyway, hey? Um, well, I guess the town of Truro is a small community anyway, and I've had so much support as a, a youth and, and growing up in this community as an athlete. So I'm really fortunate enough to be in a community like this that supports me as much as they do. Um, so I do know a lot of people in the town, and my both my parents work here in Truro. So I'm 21, and yeah, I'm just happy to be from Truro, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. You grew up in Brookfield, did you? Um, yeah, so I just live on the outskirts of Brookfield and Hilden area, but I went to school at South Colchester Academy. Nice. That's mm -hmm. awesome. And I mean, a lot of people watching, a lot of people who know you know your story, know your family's story. But for the purposes of our Truro Famous talk, I'm going to ask you anyway. <laughs> tell us a little bit about, so growing up in Brookfield um, and be, being from the Truro area, what got you into curling? Because you started curling at a very young age. So maybe give us a little bit of, of your history, Carly. Yeah, so I started curling when I was about six years old. Um, what I can remember is I was like always on the back backboards with my dad and he would be at practice or he would sit me on the rock and push me along the ice on the rock. So mm -hmm. it kind of grew up in my family. Like both my grandparents curled, both my parents curled. Um, and they've also had crazy amount of success as well. So I've been super lucky to have a family that supports this kind of passion I have for curling because they have the same kind of drive in this sport. So that's kind of how I got started. Um, it was in my blood to curl, I guess. And yeah, it's really fun because a lot of everyone in my family curls. So we'll have family spiels and I'll see my parents or my grandparents at the club and my uncle. And it's, it's nice. I'm lucky that way. <laughs> It's so great because I I don't remember how it, I think I met you when we were working for the town, yes? Right. For Parks and Rec. But then I sort of helped a bit behind the scenes of the um, Pinty's Grand Slam when it was here a couple years ago. And that's when I really got to see, well, first of all, that's when I met your mom, who is amazing. Mm -hmm. And and. I had already met your dad and he's great too, but it was when I really got to see how much support there is for you in this community. Um, like there's so many people that I hope you know that support you outside of your family. And and uh, it's really fun to see that, that support all come together for you. 
No, for sure. And even in the Pan- Pinty's Grand Slam here in Truro, it was a big thing for a team, like getting to play on that stage alone, but separately at the, the young age I was, I was, I was just so fortunate enough to get to play in my hometown. And I did a cool video with you and that was awesome because everyone loved to see that. And yeah, I'm, it's awesome being from such a small community because the support, no matter where I am competing in the world, they're always behind me. Like they're always cheering for me. So I'm, I'm just so lucky to be from a small town. And, you know, um, as somebody who followed along with your most recent win, which we'll get into in a sec, but um, just seeing your mom, just the pride of her sharing every day. And Mm -hmm. like you said, like streaming and, and just being a part, even though they couldn't necessarily be there, they're still there in spirit and, and cheering you along is, is just really cool to see. And you feel like you're part of it, which is great. Yeah, actually both my parents made the trip over to Russia this year. So that was a, it was such a short turnaround. There was so many things to, to do and it was really expensive because plane tickets, we had to get it in like two weeks and stuff, but my parents made the trip over. So it was once in a lifetime opportunity for both them and myself, but it was pretty special. I can say that every world championship I've been to, I've either had both my parents or my mom as well. So I'm just so lucky. I, can't, I keep saying that. But <laughs> It's a good thing to keep saying. I mean, I don't think that's ever a bad thing. (laughs) Tell us about that win. So, because you you competed here in Canada first, yes? Right. Um, So this past season, I I was, I'm 21 now. So ending out of juniors, you have to be under 21. So as my last year in juniors play, I decided I want to set myself up for the best possible opportunity to wear the Maple Leaf one last time in juniors. So I made a move to Manitoba um, to curl with some girls up there and one from PEI actually moved up with me as well. So even though I was in Manitoba, I still had support here from Nova Scotia, which was amazing. And I thank everyone for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had a first compete out of Manitoba to win the provincial jacket. We were fortunate enough to do that. And then we competed at nationals um, representing Manitoba. And then we had a great week there. It was probably one of my best weeks I've ever played on the national stage with my team. So that was really fun. And then from there, we won the gold medal. So we were able to go and represent Canada at Russia. So it was a different year as it was my first time not representing Nova Scotia since I started curling. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm really happy I took that move and risk um, because I wouldn't have another world championship under my belt. So, yeah. Great. It really is great. And did you get any people saying, I'm hoping the answer is going to be no, but did you get any people saying, no, Carly's not playing for no promotion? <laughs> I'm sure there's a couple people that probably had that around me, but I didn't hear it, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a good answer. I like that. <laughs> and then well, from you the- your gold medal and they're, you know, <laughs> <laughs> And then from there was Russia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was crazy and amazing opportunity. And um, we were actually so lucky to have competed so early because there's a lot of curling teams that didn't get to wear the Maple Leaf and compete because COVID happened a couple weeks after we returned from Russia. Um, it was amazing, though. I get to play in their arena. And it was probably the best world championships I've ever been to because it was so well together and the arena felt like I was at the Olympics like it was so beautiful it was huge brand new um yeah and I get to go with like new people that have never went to a world championship before so they were super excited um and yeah the girls that I'm curling with right now are my best friends and we get along so well which is crazy because it was just a year it was less than a year than I first met them so um it was it was an unbelievable season and to finish off with gold in Russia with our parents and it was amazing. That's so special to make. I mean, you must have made so many connections over the years, too, with other curlers and um, in all the other places that that you've gone. Um, like how many. So give us kind of a bird's eye view of like how many 
countries you've gone to with curling, how many championships you've played in. If I mean, you don't need to be right unless your mom and dad are watching. But. <laughs> We're not fact checking this information. <laughs> um, so I believe it's seven national championships I've been to. Um, and I've also been to Canada Games. So that's not counting Canada Games. Just junior nationals seven different times. Um, and then five times internationally to world championship, um, youth Olympics. And then there's other like cash wheels throughout the season, but those are my international and national events that I've played in. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's it, but it's pretty busy because the nationals is like a week and a half and then traveling for worlds ends up to being like two weeks. And I've been to Norway, um, Denmark, South Korea, um, Russia and Scotland and then one world championship was in Liverpool, Nova Scotia. So I've been lucky. Like, Liverpool, that. Nova Scotia? That's <laughs> <laughs> that was 2019, two years ago. I was fifth player for um Team Canada. The Alberta team won and they decided to take me as fifth because it was my hometown or my home province. So nice. Yeah, it was nice of them to do that, but it was pretty cool. Like, you know how cool that is, right? Like, as a 21-year-old, I know you've said a couple of times how lucky you are, but, like, that's pretty amazing that mm -hmm. you've been to all those places. Yeah, and sometimes I need to just, like, step back and take a look at, like, how fortunate I've been to travel the world. And as an athlete, like, I trained so hard for it in the first place. But when I realize when it's just – it's so much to be proud of. So, Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. And I, this might just be like social media stalking talking, but <laughs> so you can tell me if I'm wrong, but does your boyfriend, did he win as well in Russia or am I making this up? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we met a couple years ago at nationals. He represented Manitoba and I was at Nova Scotia and um, we kind of met up there and we started chatting and actually he's cousins with Tyler Tardy who I went to Youth Olympics with. He was chosen from BC. Um, so we're still really close friends, and it was kind of funny that his cousin turned out to now be my boyfriend, but um, mm -hmm. we met at Nationals, and then this year he skipped his own team and represented Manitoba, where he won gold at the Nationals, so we both traveled to Russia together um, in our last junior year, and we both finished off with gold medal for Canada. So it was a crazy year. And That's amazing. Yeah amazing opportunity to go with yeah. him as well so yeah it was like a split second where I was like what if they broke up and I'm here asking <laughs> <laughs> We're all together he's actually, he's actually um here this well he came a couple weeks ago now so he's here for the rest of the summer kind of exploring Nova Scotia so yeah that's good I know that would have been really awkward and I was like man I didn't like ask her like, before <laughs> This is not very professional right now. <laughs> the moment of watching your face to see if your expression changed. Right? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I think we're good. It's so cool, though, to have somebody, and this is off topic a little bit, sorry, but uh, to have somebody new in town and you can kind of show them around some of your favorite places mm. and stuff like that. I think that's so much fun when there's people from out of province visiting. Has he yeah. been here before? He has a couple times, but um, usually just like for a week and but we're going to be able to travel to Cape Breton with my family next weekend. So he's never been, I've actually never been on the Cabot trail either. So. Oh, it's wonderful. Fun. And then we're going to PEI this weekend. So we're going to see a little bit of everything because now he's off quarantine. Of course, he's been here for 17 days now, so he's fine. But yeah. Um, yeah so I'm excited to show him a little bit more of Atlanta, Canada. That's awesome. Yeah. You talked about um, COVID. So you obviously just got in under the wire mm. with your last win in Russia. Um, what comes next? Like, because I know a lot of sports, and we talked a little bit about this before we went live, like a lot of sports, every sport, I guess, is having to kind of reevaluate how they play and, and what that looks like. What's next for curling? Yeah, so first to touch on the point about coming home um, after Russia, I can't, I can't remember the date exactly, but we got home and two weeks later, everything was like shut down. Yeah. Um, 
So we were lucky to get back in time and fortunate enough to be able to play our world juniors because I know the world men's and world women's get canceled as well. So we're super lucky to be able to have that opportunity that we did. Um, for curling this upcoming season, it's still kind of up in the air. Um, it's pushed back a little bit. Usually we start like mid August to late August, but not a lot of events are happening that early just because they're trying to figure out how we go about this. Um, but yesterday there was actually a re release from world curling, um, talking about points for, um, the world curling stage. So that means like, um, for grand slams, for example, the Pinty's grand slam, you have to qualify for those events. So playing in these world curling events that have points, um, you will qualify to play on the grand slam where now they're not doing the point system anymore. So there's no grand slams till after January, I think, um, oh, wow. and no point system. So I'm sure in the next couple of days, we'll hear from curling Canada about how they're going to go about that for, um, trials and Olympics for 2022, because right mm -hmm. now the team I'm with, our goal is to make the trials for 2022. Um, but we don't really know how the point system is going to work or how that's going to happen right now. But a lot of events have been canceled due to insufficient funds or simply worried about just having it. So, um, we haven't heard too much, but the fact that world curling came out and there's no international point system is, is huge for the international teams and the teams in Canada that make a lot of the money, their money on the grand slam stage. So mm -hmm. that's going to be a little bit different and who knows really what's going to happen until we all start gearing up for it, but it's going to look different for sure. And hopefully we can keep on track to get to the trials in 2022. It's yeah, because so you don't, I was watching uh, the news this morning, of course, they're talking about how Tokyo would have started today um, with the with the 2020 Olympics. And then, you know, you kind of think ahead. And I was thinking exactly that, knowing that we were going to be talking to you. Well, two years from now is not that long, like the 2022 Olympics, it wouldn't even be two years until then. So it's it kind of puts a, a hiccup I'm sure in, in your training and, and how you can kind of plan to make that goal. So like when you look at our schedule kind of before this all happened, we were going to be traveling to Ontario, Alberta, Saskatchewan to all, obviously there's money involved as well, but the biggest thing for our team is getting those points so we can move up in the world rankings and curling Canada rankings mm -hmm. that allow us to get to the, that bigger stage, but of like the trials and playing in the slams. But since I'm not sure if those are going to be happening anymore, um, I, who knows? Like, I don't think we'll be traveling much just to save the money because there's going to be no point system Yeah, until probably November, December. So and traveling's complicated right now as well, right? Like it's not as simple as just traveling. You know, if you if you want to come back to Nova Scotia, you're going to have to quarantine and all of that sort of thing. It's it's complicated. Yeah, and there's a lot of curling teams in Ontario, and there's a lot of great spiels in Ontario. So that's half the reason we wanted to go there. Mm -hmm. um, but we we're going to have to quarantine for 14 days when we return back to Manitoba. So it's, it's going to be a lot of everyone staying in their home province, but yeah, who knows? We'll see. Everyone's in the same boat. Every sport is. And that's it. And every, I'm sure that all of the um, organizations are trying to adapt. They want, you know, they want the best to, to get to 2022 and, and, and are trying to adapt to make that possible without, you know, stressing you guys out too much. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, that's the funny thing, like, for people who aren't in the sports world, is hearing, for me, hearing talk of 2022, and the prep, and the, you know, the strategy that is behind getting there. You know what I mean? Like, you just don't realize how much and how far out that prep time really is for all of these sports, but for you guys, especially. Yeah, because qualifying happens basically this year with the point system mm -hmm. and then November is when trials are. So like this whole year is the big year for everyone to get the points. Cause there's only so, so many teams that get invited to the trials, which is like, I think 16 in total in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think so, something like that. But um, yeah. we're not fact checking, Carly. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting that you said that about the women's and men's finals being um, canceled this year. And I was just thinking how you said you just, I don't know if it's called aged out or, or however that is of juniors. I mean, that's a very tight window of had you not had that opportunity to play, you wouldn't be able to play in the juniors anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, lot, I obviously aged out, so I'm moving up to women's. But yeah, I, I'm lucky to have finished my junior career last year because who knows what the junior career for the national stage and world stage is going to look like this year. I have no idea. But um, yeah, we had a two-week window and we got our world championship in and then bam, everything was shut down. And we were actually invited to the Grand Slam in April, the Champions Cup, where after whoever wins the World Juniors gets an automatic invite. So we were super excited to go to that. Like that's half, that's a big reason winning World Championships, you get to go to a Grand Slam. Um, but that got canceled. Um, but we're actually really fortunate enough to be invited to the one in April this year. Um, so that's exciting, but who knows? <laughs> I know it's like it's kind of interesting times where like we all just feel like we're on the same page like yeah. nobody can plan ahead nobody can really say much about yeah. what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah yeah no that's pretty crazy so have all of the people on your current team so the team that you just won with have they all advanced or I don't know if it's called advanced or not but have are they all now in the women's um as well or have some of them stayed behind in junior yeah so we're all moving up to women's together um two of us actually aged out but one is has two years left in juniors and is one another one is an overager where she'd be able to compete at the nationals but if she did win nationals she wouldn't be able to represent um worlds the following year because they're now changing the junior event to you win it in they're extending the season for juniors i'm not sure what the date is of nationals now but you win nationals, you wait a whole year till you compete at Worlds. Okay. Um, which is very different because usually I played and you had like a couple weeks and then you'd rate off to Worlds. But mm -hmm. yeah, so two of them still have years in juniors left, but we just had such a successful year together. We got along so well and we were high enough in the Canadian rankings that we wanted to move together in women's and see how the next couple years go together. So I'm looking forward to it. Very cool. So what are you doing now for curling? So right now I'm just training. I had a home gym for a while since the gyms weren't open, but um, I have an awesome trainer, Kyle Turcotte, who works out of the University of Manitoba and, and works with Curling Canada. So he's sending me stuff for I, me to do in the gym here. And hopefully I can get back in August without the quarantine and then um, work with my team and my trainer. But who knows? <laughs> Yeah, who knows is right. Um, and are you, so when you say you're training now, are you doing that? You're not at home anymore. Are you doing that in the, the Turo Club here downtown? Yes, I'm in the gym now. Is, yeah, I don't have to use my home gym anymore. Yay. <laughs> yeah, it's like we all have had this weird transition where we're like, everyone's transitioning. To, um, now I have to work from home. And now everybody is like transitioning back yeah you know, it almost feels weird when we have like meetings outside of our house and yeah. that, those kind of crazy things when people want to meet in person it's like you want to do what now <laughs> i have to put pants on what <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so carly tell us a little bit about your job i know michelle mentioned earlier mm -hmm. you're working the summer cruiser job with Pure country. I always want to say cat country, but it's not. It's pure country and big dog. So how's that going? So I'm in a cruiser this summer. It's a lot of fun. It's definitely different for sure because I would usually be out doing events and all the concerts that we were supposed to have in August. So mm -hmm. right now my job is really just to hit up some local landmarks that people should check out this summer in our area between Picto and East Hans. So I'm cruising around and finding some hot spots for the summer. And then in the mornings, I do um, sponsor locations. So Subway, Hulls Ford, Colchester Tree Service, um, Central Equipment, and 
um, Leisure Days are my five sponsors that I hit up in the mornings every weekday. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's you did a good job. You just rolled those off your tongue. Like, you did. <laughs> without cheating, I don't think, anyway. So that's good. You remembered all your sponsors. <laughs> and it's fun. It's fun following. I, I follow on uh, Instagram and seeing the places that you, you find every day. And you were at Burnt Coat Head yesterday or yeah. the day before. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, that's such a beautiful place. I was like, oh, maybe more people will go. <laughs> It was it was beautiful yesterday too, and I stopped at Anthony's Provincial Parks. Like I'm finding some cool spots that I've never heard of, mm -hmm. and I'm, yeah, it's really fun. That's what I feel, and I think it's already happening. But I think it'll continue to happen throughout the summer. Is one of the benefits is that people are visiting local areas that they mm -hmm. might not have visited before, or going on staycations and not too far from home. Um, like, what are some, do you have tips or things that, hot spots that you prefer over other, not, you don't have to say the ones you prefer them over, but the, <laughs> the highlights of the places that you've been visiting? Well, Burncoat definitely is amazing. Um, um, Five Islands is always really nice. I went there a couple weeks ago and it's beautiful. You can spend a whole afternoon out there, go to Diane's. Like, there's so much fun stuff to do around here and yeah, like you said, like now that we're spending spending our time in our province, there's I can just explore a little bit more. Like like I said, I'm going to Cape Breton, and I haven't been to Cape Breton to just to have a little vacation. I don't think ever. So um, yeah, it's it's different, but I get to roam around and see some cool spots and hit up some beaches. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. You spoke my language when you said Diane's. That <laughs> like. <laughs> You're reminding me that I haven't gone yet this summer. So that's got to be on my list. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are your favorite beaches to go to? Um, I like Rushton's Beach in Tatamagosh because the water is so warm. Yeah. Um, and Melbourne is always a good one as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I, yeah, we, uh, lately I've been going only to the one in Pugwash, the Gulf Shore Beach, just okay. a sentimental beach for me. But I really like Mel Murphy too, actually. And I often actually forget about that one for yeah. some reason. I haven't been to Mel Murphy in ages. Yeah. Now I'm like, hmm, next sunny day. <laughs> and um, there's a lot of good ones in Halifax as well, like Crystal Crescent. If you've never been there, it's really cool. Okay. Um, yeah, I know it's funny. When I lived in Halifax, I didn't have a car. So it was like, you don't really get to the beaches. But I, um, since I left, I, you know, I've gone back and sort of or, um, experienced some of those beaches too. And I mean, it's Nova Scotia. There's so many great places to, to go for sure. Um, Michelle, you always ask... Yes, my my Your signature question. Your question. And Roxy has an opinion about it. Come here. So I always ask people, and especially where you were living um, in Manitoba, um, when you come home, we have like, what is your favorite place to go to? Or now that you know your boyfriend's here, where's your favorite place to show off Truro? To say to him, okay, this is the place we have to go first. Um, the place you most look forward to when you come home? Oh, geez, that's a good question. It's hard, right? <laughs> it's like, oh. um, well, lately, like, I always love the farmer's market in Truro. Mm. So me and mom, on, or, well, every Saturday morning, since I'm in the cruiser, I head to the Truro farmer's market. My mom's always there. So I love the market that we have here in Truro and some couple nice spots, like, we have like Jamali's and Novelty. Like those are such cute cafes that I like to go to. Yeah. Um, great spots for studying. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think the hitting up the cafes that we have here in Truro and the farmer's market I love. So, And it's changed a lot too, hey? Like you said, mm -hmm. like I feel like, you know, when you were, I mean, you're, you're young anyway, but even when you were growing up and going to school, you know, there weren't a lot of places to hang out downtown, right? Like, so, and now you have options, which is just, I, I, I just love that it's changed so much. Yeah. yeah. And like, even like this summer, you look at Nook and Cranny, like they're, um, 
their patio and tonight I'm going belly up with my friends to see the patio. So there's yeah. so many cool things now in Truro and yeah. And everybody's adapting too, right? With the, with the bigger patios and places that didn't have patios now have patios. It's, there are some good things that have come out of all of this. And sure. Yeah. Well, we might as well plug belly up. Who's playing? Is it live music? Uh, not tonight, but okay. um, this weekend they have height requirement playing on Saturday or I think oh. like that. Okay, cool. Where do you get uh, your info from? Like, where do you find out? Like, when you're doing the cruiser, where do you find out what's going on? Where Because a lot of people I, I find, and it's gotten better over the last couple of years as well with Turo Buzz and those types of things, but, like, where do you um, find out where to go? Yeah, most of it I just – you go through Facebook events and see what's mm -hmm. happening or if anyone's talking about something on Facebook. Um, but since there's not a lot of events going on, I kind of just find my own spot to go, but usually I'll have someone through bell send me um, some spots to, to go as well. Awesome. Hitting up those sponsor spots again too. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So what else? What's next? Um, well, I guess <laughs> I'm going to do, go back to Manitoba and curl again, but I'm excited to finish my degree in kinesiology this year. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a couple credits left, so I'm going to graduate this year and I don't know what I'm going to go to after, but I'm actually really enjoying this job this summer. So I might be looking at sports journalism or broadcasting, um, yeah, or sports med or, um, sports therapy. Yeah, we'll see. Something within that, I guess. <laughs> within the field of sport, which you're yeah. very passionate about. which Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you did your first couple years at Dow, correct? Yeah, so I'm going to be graduating from Dalhousie, even though I've, I've lived in Manitoba for the last year, I guess. Um, so there's a cool program. It's the Visiting Student Program they have at U of M, where I can take classes at their school and they'd be equivalent to my degree at Dow. A lot of mm -hmm. universities do that, but it allows me to not have to transfer schools and lose a whole bunch of credits. Um, I can just have my credits at Dow, do these classes, and they transfer to, or they're equivalent to classes at Dalhousie. So, oh, cool. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. <laughs> so I get to graduate from Dalhousie. So I was physically in Halifax for my first three years of university. Right, right. It's nice that they're able to do that, that, you know, because you're attached to Dal. You were there for three years. Yeah, and I love I loved Dal, but yeah. if I was to transfer schools, I would have lost the whole complete year. Mm -hmm. So I would have been, I'm taking my degree in five years because a lighter course workload for curling. And if I would have transferred, I would have been in six years. So it's, it was kind of a no-brainer to just take classes up there as – a Dalhousie student so like the obvious question for me right now just as a you know former university student um slash current female how in the world do you balance all of that Carly like you going to university playing like curling I was gonna say playing curling that's the show. <laughs> playing curling <laughs> No, but going to university, I mean, top-notch curler who is training all of the time, um, but also studying for your courses. Like, what if you could give some advice to people watching, how do you balance all of that? I guess the first thing I want to say is in university, like, school is tough and you're really busy, but I think the most important thing is to have something to get away from your school books. Um, that Like, that's what makes me excited every day. If I have something I would like to go and do something else instead of have to worry for school, because it is stressful in university. I'm not going to say like, I don't get stressed with school, but I do. Um, but I've been lucky that I've, I've been doing full-time school, but taking lighter course loads of three or four courses instead of five, um, which makes me have a five year pr or be in university my degree for five years but I get to compete and do all the other stuff I love and not have to get too stressed about school so I just I really think it's important to have a balance as a student and an athlete um to have something to keep your mind off this and 
uh, the stress of school or the stress of competing, sometimes you just want to go back to school. Like, um, yeah. That's a really smart way of doing it. And I, I hope that other athletes consider that as well, because, you know, you put, you don't need to put that pressure on yourself to get through school in X number of years, right? Exactly. Like, exactly. It's going to mean that you're going to be stressed the whole time. And yeah. And like, um, as, as an athlete, like I love this, I love sports so much and I can never see myself not playing curling, um, for school. So I, I have put curling first off. Um, but it's really important to time manage as well. Cause I, I have so many things on my plate, but, um, as a student and athlete, just finding a balance and getting that support system from your family and friends is, is also so key. Mm-hmm. I mean, you hear that with anybody you talk to. I mean, not just in sports, obviously, either, but in general, having that support system and, and seeking out that support system and asking for help when you need it, all of those things is just so, so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Hey, Carly, we really appreciate you joining us today. I know it's not easy when you're fitting us in on your lunch break. So we really do appreciate chatting with you. I'm selfishly just happy to see your face because it's been a while. So I'm glad to hear that you're well. And we wish you so well. With yes. your upcoming- we hope to see you in 2022. We'll cheer you on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me today. It was so much fun. I'm glad I get to talk on the Facebook page. Awesome. Toro famous. <laughs> All right, great. So, and everybody who's watching, thanks for watching as well. And we will see you next week. Bye.